Alrighty, Ted here, round four, Final Fantasy VI, Ted Woosley, Woolsey, excuse me, Uncensored Hack. Last time I got owned by this fucking stupid fish. And I want my revenge. I do not give a fuck. I have no fucks given. Hey. Be gone, Nave. Let's see. I swear to God. <laughs> Okay, so I never actually bothered to look up why I got my <laughs> my ass beat to shreds, to put it put it bluntly. <laughs> I never actually bothered to look online to find out the nature of what that move was. It said El Nino was the name of the move when I bothered to rewatch the footage. But I did notice something. I was toying with the guy. Like, I wasn't fighting optimally. I, I noticed I used attack a couple of times with both Cyan and Sabin, which you're not supposed to do. So real talk, like I was trying to say before, Cyan is not that bad of a character. Gameplay speaking. Yeah, sure his magic stat sucks, yeah sure his speed sucks, but does it really matter in a game this easy? Save for when, you know, you get El Nino'd. Bring it on, you son of a bitch. Finish it, Cyan! Finish it! Later, you son of a bitch. Oh, would you look at that? You're practically unconscious in the river. Who would have guessed? <laughs> Draped in monster hides, eyes shining with intelligence, a youth with a kind heart mind surviving against all odds. Gao. I'll talk more about Gao in just a moment. 
Now Gao goes to investigate because firstly he's very curious. Now a lot of people don't really care for Gao and assume that he doesn't have a lot of characterization, but he really does if you really take a, a strong glance at him. And he's actually very important to Cyan's character as well, which I'll go into when we actually recruit Gao. This is considered Gao's theme. I personally like to think of Gao's theme as the theme for the Velt, for very obvious reasons. It's very tribal, it's very potent, it's very powerful. And you know Gao hits like a fucking tank. Now, <clears throat> let's see, we're going to the town right up here. I'll talk more about Gao in a little bit. First I want to talk about the Velt. I cannot stand the Velt. I've actually not, not once and never will choose to do so collect all of the rages, or any rages for that matter. To my knowledge, I believe that the only rages that are really all that useful are ones like, what's it called, Stray Cat. Ah, oh, god damn it! <laughs> uh, sorry, gal. Is that city? Can't run away. God damn it. Oh shit, I'm about to die. Hell, these are the guys from Narsh. Yeah, so any enemy that you've defeated can show up here. That is another reason why it's a good idea to save this scenario for last, assuming that you are actually going to get the rages. Because. You get all of the enemy rages that you can get from the first two scenarios on the Velt. Now the purpose of the Velt, of course, is to get rages, for those who don't know, which is 1% of you. Rages function like enemy skills, so Gao is essentially a blue mage of sorts combined with a berserker. Where in the hell am I going? I know the town is to the north. Oh, it's up here. Didn't we just kick your guys' ass? Like, a moment ago? Yeah, the, the Velt, as far as I'm concerned, is completely useless because... It takes a ridiculous amount of time to get all of the rages that you want. Oh my god, not again. Even just to get the good rages takes a considerable amount of time. And it's not worth it for the simple fact that you can only use rages if you're using Gao. That's assuming you want to keep him in your party amongst many other great characters, both in terms of their combat and their actual personality. So in other words, you're only going to be using those rages a handful of times. And the game is so easy that you don't even need to do so. Is. Now let us see. I, I gotta go get the meat in there, but first I'm gonna investigate a bit. Ha! Huh, interesting. Oh, I know where this is. This is the soldier, or he's nearby.
I'm pretty sure that this is where the wounded soldier. Yep, there he is. This is the wounded soldier. Of course, Cyan would be here. Wow. Isn't that great? Playing this game a second time around, you realize, oh my god, it's Cyan here! <laughs> Seriously though, I hope Cyan and Lola hook up because they both deserve it. They really do. They both lost someone important to them due to the Empire. They deserve to start over. Everyone does. Dried meat, which only has purpose in this one section of the game as far as I know. How come you didn't join your party? <laughs> uh, okay, let's buy some equipment here, because I know there's something of use. Uh, oh, there we go. If you can't tell, if you, if you haven't noticed, I'm not paying too much attention to what I buy because I'm never gonna run out of gill. Let me check. There's an N. Nope. We're out of here. Seriously, this is the perfect theme for just a badass. Just walking up on stage. This is the theme I would give my crew if I were in a gang. Ba, 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 ba. Don't mess with every motherfucking dead. Na, 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 na. Come on, I need Gao. I need something to talk about. Oh no! Science berserk! That means if Gao shows- Okay, thank god. <laughs> Lucky me, huh? Stray cat.
Oh god, damn it! You're shitting me, right? Okay, 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 we made it. It's good. It is good. I got this. Heh <laughs> Gal's happy because we fed him. Okay, so... Gal is actually very intelligent. Very perceptive. In fact, it, uh, it is... To my suspicion, that if Gao were not raised the way he was, he would be near genius. Now, Gao was raised in the wild, the Tarzan effect basically, because his father was insane, to put it bluntly. A lot of people, I'm going to sidetrack for a moment, a lot of people like to consider Kefka to be psychotic, insane, crazy, etc., and nothing more. And I sit there and look at them like, really? Kefka's not that insane. When I think of insane, I think of Gao's father who doesn't even know what fucking planet he's on. That is insane. That is insanity. You're a regular munchkin. <laughs> Afraid? What? You want to fight? And this is their idea of fighting. <laughs> It's funny, because they, they, they both are from the wild, essentially. Sabin, not quite so literally compared to Gao, who's, you know, seeing things from a beast perspective. But Sabin basically lived out there. Not quite in the wild around animals, but he lived, I guess, in the fields or in the mountains. He, he was away from society in general, because he was a monk. That's what they do. Simmer down, sirs! Okay, so... The reason why Gao is so important to Cyan's character arc is because... Cyan just lost a son. And now he found Gao. Oh, stop, stop, stop. Stop stuttering. Stop. There we go. Gao, on the other hand... Lost a father. So, you see how that kind of... <laughs> see how that's kind of cool? So Gao is like the first step to Cyan moving on with his life and finding some kind of purpose. And I like to think that Gao is a big part of what convinced him to join the Returners and go along with them in the first place. He had his own motivations, I'm sure, from losing his family, but I like to think that seeing Gao grow and being able to fight with him and protect him was sort of his, his chance to undo his past, so to speak. And I think it's kind of funny, because Gao is the opposite of what his son was. Cyan, and by extension his son, were very noble, were very, were very um... Not Gao, let's put it that way. <laughs> mm -mm. So yeah, another reason why I like to consider Gao to be intelligent, or at least perceptive, is the fact that he understands society. Hell, he speaks English for God's sakes. But he chose not to re-immerse re himself within society. He decided it wasn't worth it. 
maybe he he saw people's greed or people's hatred <laughs> and just decided you know what I don't have a problem that I was raised as a beast think how jealous Locke's gonna be when he hears about this <laughs> Who would be Locke? He bad man? Yeah, very bad. <laughs> Maybe he try steal my treasure. If you didn't laugh at this, you, you have no soul. I'm sorry. If you didn't find this funny, I have bad news for you, my friend. You don't have a sense of humor. See, he even knows the name of a fucking town. Let me put it to you this way. Gao is intelligent. He is just ignorant. Gal <laughs> walking backwards. Seriously, this is the best cast within the series, hands down. There's no contest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But not only are they the most diverse and most varied, but they're the most developed. I wish that their synergy, their relationship between one another was more developed. Like, this particular scene was done very well. All three characters, if this was the first scene you had seen from the game, you would have a very good grasp on all three of these characters and how they relate to each other and how they speak with each other. But there are only a handful of moments like that within the game, especially when you reach the World of Ruin. I just wish there was a lot more back and forth between them. Like, Seven did that very well. You had the individual characters who would talk to Cloud and talk, how, speak how they would speak to Cloud. And even during scenes, you would have two, the two of them together. And those moments would be very pivotal to their characters. One really good example, and this is perhaps the best example I can think of, is in Final Fantasy VII, there's a scene where Kate Sith talks to Barrett and basically says, Huh? Let me ask you something, Barrett, and I've been meaning to ask you this for a while. I'm paraphrasing, by the way. I've been meaning to ask you this for a while. When you blew up that reactor, how many people did you kill? Gotta expect a few casualties. What was a few casualties to you was everything to those people who lost them. Those two, those statements, those arguments are very, very indicative of their characters. There was a moral debate going on between them. You don't get any of that sort of thing in Final Fantasy VI. So, that is a downside I will give to 6, or a, a positive I'll give to 7. 7 was really great with that. Gal, Feral Youth. What I try to do is whenever I recruit a character or do something that involves their character arc where the focus is shifted towards them, I try to make them the head of my party until I get Setzer, of course, and then Setzer takes priority. Now, as far as I know, this sequence is random as to where you find the object, I think, because I had a vague idea of where I found it the first time and then I couldn't find it when I went through the second time. I'll be able to confirm it in a moment. But it's okay. <laughs> Face palm. <laughs> uh, but it's okay though. It's okay. You get some great scenes that go along with it. I wonder if they actually give me that potion.
Thank God there aren't random battles in here. That shit would piss me off. Well, found it. Damn it, we didn't get to see the the um the part where it's like I had five hundred gill in that wallet <laughs> or some shit like that. Seven. I think this is where I found it last time. Let's roll. Now, I'm going to wait a moment before I say anything. Gal looks down, runs back, and gets in his position. <laughs> so, I have to wonder, is Gal afraid of heights? Is he afraid of fast-flowing water? Or is he simply afraid of leaving what he considers to be home? He hesitates for a moment and decides, you know what? Fuck it. Friends are worth it. Go! Now, don't quote me, but I think I start off with more rages than I'm supposed to. And my reason for, for believing this is that if you'll notice in my rage thing, I have... Oh no, I guess I don't. I take that back. That was a, uh, a cheat I used. Damn it. <laughs> That's the only reason I didn't get Stray Cat, because I thought I would still have it. <laughs> Stray Cat is a really good rage. I really like this section. Yeah, I don't understand how this mechanic works right here. What the difference is between going each section or four. Ooh. Laptop battery's going low. I'll have to fix that in a moment. Oh shit. Ooh. Ooh. That was a close one, right? <laughs> oh god. Damn it. Okay. Calm down, Ted. It's gonna be alright. I really don't want to waste my other elixir on Gal. I really like this sequence visually. They took really good uh, advantage of the Mode 7.
Watch this be the death of me. Nope. <laughs> I win. So now we're in uh, Albrook or Nakia. I'm pretty sure this is Albrook. Nope, not yet. Sorry. Right here, buddy. <laughs> this this conversation is very interesting. You licentious howler, unhand me! Yeah, this wasn't this part here wasn't in the SNES version. <laughs> I I think it was in the GBA, but I call this one Humpty raises left hit, and this one Dumpty <laughs> raises right tit. What? <laughs> Slides against the wall. <laughs> Humpty D Dumpty. Now, this has a lot of implications for Cyan, but I want to go out on a limb and say that Cyan is someone who's very old-fashioned. He had a wife, for God's sakes. But at the same time, he's also very uh, dirty-minded. I'm pretty sure the magazines that you can find in the World of Ruin when you recruit him a word dirty magazines. That's it's to my speculation. So he's kind of being swooned in by this, but at the same time he's conflicted for very obvious reasons. He just lost a wife. He's very old-fashioned about his ideas of marriage. Rant, rant, rant. He sounds like an old man. <laughs> <laughs> Empire Arc Dicks. Well, what do you know, kid? You didn't have shit. So, yeah. Fuck you. So far, everything in here has been junk. I haven't been able to buy a single thing because it's all useless. Or not very useful. Okay. That's one thing. One thing I can't even use right now. Yo, I can't wait till I get to Narsh. <laughs> like I said, this is one of my absolute favorite portions of the game. It's divided into several segment segments, of course. You know, there's each of the three scenarios, and then there's Narsh, the battle as a whole. But I like to think of all four of those sections of the game as one really big piece. And... That is probably my favorite segment. If I divided the entire game based off of segments of equal length to what I just described, the three scenarios and then the Nar scenario, if I divided it up like that, I would say that this segment would probably be my favorite in the game. And I know that's 
kind of a weird comparison, but... My favorite part about it is just how it all flows together. We get all these separate journeys, and they're all very interesting. Well, I mean, Tara, Bannon, and, and Edgar's is okay until the end. But they're all very, very important to the overall story. Locke and, and um, Celeste, you get a new crewmate. Crewmate, what is this, One Piece? <laughs> you get a new party member, and you get some information about the Empire. Um... Tara and Bannon and Edgar scenario, you learn about their plan to awaken the Esper, which they, you kind of already knew to begin with, but it's still, it's elaborated on a little further. And then this one, well, you're watching it, so. Friends you've never met. The three have reached Narsh. And a decisive battle is about to take place. This is the fir this is the first place you go to in the very beginning of the game. And why are you going here? Oh wait, the very same Esper, which was the very same reason you were going at the very beginning of the game. Hmm. <sighs> Hey, Ban like I said, Bannon is a realist. Oh, it's going to be a hell of a lot worse than the original. I like to think of the, of the War of Ruin as the War of the Magi 2.0. Only worse. I guess that's debatable. Not faithful retainer to the King of Doma? Case in point. But, then this right here, this elder I can only assume is the effective, the de facto leader of Narsh, okay? Narsh is neutral. The sole reason why we have to convince them to fight the Empire is because they're afraid. But that was only because Doma was collaborating with the Returners. Which I had completely forgotten about when I was talking about Doma earlier. <laughs> anyway, so even though they've already been pillaged by the Empire once, they try to make excuses for themselves because they say to themselves, it could always be worse. Okay, yeah, sure, they killed a lot of our people, but if we collaborate with the Returners, we'll lose everything. They're afraid. They're afraid to die. It's just that simple. That's also why they remain neutral, because if they were afraid of the Empire, why not just join forces with the Empire? Because then they would be a have to be afraid of the Returners. They figure that no side is best. And this is where Locke hammers it in the nail that it doesn't matter whether or not you're sided with the Returners. You have the Esper. They are on their way to kill all of you right now. So, you can either side with us, or you can not side with us. But either way, you're going to get attacked by the Empire. And where do we hear it? <laughs> yeah. She is responsible for the torching of Miranda. She probably led the charge for that. That was probably one of the things that kind of stuck in her head about the Empire. So that might have also had some influence on her betraying the Empire along with Kefka poisoning Doma.
See what I mean? Edgar, that's why I said, <laughs> that's why I said Edgar is effectively, or let me, let me stop and step back, okay? That is why I said Leo is effectively the Edgar of the Empire. They are very, very much alike. They both understand that the, while the other side is quote-unquote evil, not everyone within it is, both sides are just swept up into circumstances they can't understand or control. <laughs> Yo, this is this is it. I don't care what you do here. Just get me that Esper. Lord Kafka, what about the civilians? Uh, uh, civilians? Exterminate everyone. Wipe them all out. <laughs> Read my lips. Dispose of any who oppose us. March. Bum, 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 off to war. Oh, yeah, look how they're all just lined up. <laughs> Uh, now this is the part where Terra... Celeste says, So Terra, who'd have thought we'd meet again like this? Because she knows who Terra is. They were both very clearly there at the scene, the flashback scene where they were with Gestalt. Terra and Celeste are in identical situations. They both worked for the Empire. They were both brainwashed by the Empire. In Terra's case, more literally. They both use magic. They are both looking for some kind of love, some kind of human connection, and have so far been unable to find it. I don't blame him, he lost his family to the Empire. <laughs> this segment- look at him! Come on! Look at these detailed, very diverse characters, both in the way that they're physically designed, as in their sprite work, and in the way that their personalities shine. I'm sorry, I mean, if you don't believe that this is the, the best Final Fantasy, that's fine, I completely understand. But you are full of something, if you, if you cannot understand that this is the best cast. Oh my goodness. Look at him. And this isn't even the full cast. It is great. Oh, Bannon. Fuck you. No, I'm not prepared. Wait, what? Oh. Just look at them next to each other. It's just so awesome. Oh. <laughs> yeah. These are the coolest bunch. Uh. <laughs> you can switch them out like that. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so this is one of the few, I believe there's three sections, three multiple party segments in the game. There is the Phoenix Cave, the um, Magitech Research Facility, the final dungeon when you're fighting Kefka, and this one, which is by far my favorite because it doesn't require an endless amount of puzzle solving. Oh my god, I hate both of those dungeons. You get to select your party. You form three groups, 
and it doesn't matter how many people you do in each group. I'm going to go with my main group, the one I'm going to use to take everything out, and that's going to be... I don't have Drill yet, so I'm going to leave Edgar out of that one. Terra here. Lock. Celeste, just in case Kappa gives me a pain in the ass amount of time. Um, let's see. Gar Brothers and Gao. I'm expecting to win with just the team I have, basically. Which, since I'm more prepared for, I should be able to. And! <laughs> oh my goodness. It is time for what may very well be, in my personal opinion, my favorite song of the entire game. Of what is arguably Nobuo Uematsu's masterpiece, his magnus opus. Save them. The only songs I can think of in this entire game that can compete with it are Omen, which is the beginning section of the game that when you, as soon as you start the game, where the, the logo, the Final Fantasy VI title appears, the little piano bit right before the War of the Magi backdrop, that section with the backdrop with the music, where they tell you about the backdrop of the story, as well as the main theme that appears when you're walking through the uh, snow towards Narsh and the Magitek. In other words, beginning of the game all the way till you reach Narsh. That's one song, okay? So that song, Setzer's theme song, and Dancing Mad, the symphonic version in particular. Those are the three songs that I compare this one to. And it plays during this awesome segment! Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, it's General Celeste, the traitor! How delightful! This'll be fun! I forgot to set my rose. <laughs> you need the speed boost. Since all you're going to be doing is attacking, I think you kind of need that. Uh, no. 
Moving this off of her, because I'm expecting to use Runic a few times. Yeah, this is one of the few segments where I actually need to use Runic regularly. Against Kefka. I mean, I can I could probably make do without it. The first time I played this game, it wasn't exactly all that difficult. But the second time, man, I died against him like four times because I was just unprepared. Almost everyone in my team was dead, I had no items to heal or revive anyone. It was just a mess. So while that's going down, I'm gonna attack with Terra. I love this segment so m oh shit I should've healed, whatever. I love this segment so much because... These people from all different walks of life, different cultures, different personalities... They've all banded together for the first time in the game. This is the first section of the game in which these characters were all together. That's a given, because we only just recruited Celeste, Gao, and, um... Cyan. I'm excluding Shadow, because... Oh, fuck. He's simply not around right now. And you're... Oh my god, think about it. <laughs> you have all these characters together in a multiple-party battle fighting against... The Empire with Kefka, the main antagonist. And even if you don't even if you don't know he's the main antagonist, you still view him as the main villain, because he's the only one you've ever seen at this point. You briefly saw Gastal and that was it. And where are you doing this at? At Narsh, where it all began. It's like a come full circle type of thing. No, but seriously, not that you should be having much trouble, so long as you're prepared, but <clears throat> if, the, if this is your first time playing the game, make sure that Celeste is in your party when you fight Kefka, because the, the battle becomes a borderline joke. Because most of what he uses are spells. <laughs> Just in case, I'm going to save up on some of my MP by using Brothers Figaro!
<laughs> Starting to rethink not putting Edgar in my main team. <laughs> like I said, Edgar's a beast. He left. <laughs> uh, just sit back, I, uh, Sabin. Not even gonna need your blitzes. Just sit back and relax. <laughs> yes! Oh, no, oh okay. Uh, yeah, like I said, Edgar is a beast. And these moves don't cost any goddamn magic at all. Oh, just fucking die already. It's like Galrex something. Um, Divine Wreck. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Oh no. I'm not that prepared. All things considered. Ooh. I gotta be really careful about what I do now. I really love this segment because it encourages you to use everyone because maybe I'm just not that great at the game. That's a definite definite and likely possibility. But as far as I can tell, beating this game beating this segment with just one party of four the whole way through is kinda difficult. Unless you like majorly stock up on items. But it's designed to be just difficult enough to require you, or at least give you incentive to, use other people. 
which is a problem I have in most RPGs, is I pick the three or four or however many characters I make per party of my favorites, whether it be based off of physical design or character personality or their motivations or their raw abilities, and I just stick with them and I never experiment outside of my main team. Why does it keep switching me? Whatever, I'm not gonna question it. Thank you, please get the guy in the back. That's what I was thinking. Cause this guy's gonna be dead, like, now. Yeah. Oh, damn it. Ah, oh, son of a bitch! Please, the magic stick in the back. I'll take that, I guess. Oh, fuck, I forgot! <laughs> Oh, shit! Uh-uh, not in my book. Just die, I don't want to waste any more magic on you. Is that finally all of them? Oh, what? No! Okay, okay, don't panic. Okay, let's panic! Let's panic! Last Phoenix down. Okay, we have elixirs. We have high potions. We don't have any ethers. That's fine. Okay, and I'm gonna save that other elixir for Celeste later. When she runs out of magic. Or at least right before I fight Kefka. Whatever. Damn it, I was hoping we'd be dead from that.
Oh, this is not gonna be good. Thank you. Should we do one more? Yep. What? Do we stand a chance? See, this is what I mean by unprepared. None of these fights are all that difficult on their own. They just... They're so long. There's so many of them that you, you get winded down. Or grinded down, I'm sorry. You end up running out of health, running out of magic, running out of items. It's a gauntlet, it's an endurance match. Jeez, I might actually die. Oh no, we don't have any more Phoenix Downs! Oh no! One of my heavy hitters is down! That's it! That's it! It's not impossible. I did this last time with one less person. Fuck. Please let this be the last one. No, damn it, I didn't tell you to attack that guy. <laughs> okay, let's see what we've got to deal with here. Oh, there's one more! Fuck! Okay, chill out. Okay, okay. We have a reasonably high chance of doing this, all things considered. This is going to Terra because I'm going to be using uh, Runic like crazy. I'm going to spam it like it's going out of style. Okay, what do you guys think? Should I save state here? <laughs> That would be so cheating. Oh my god. If I... I'm gonna be ending the stream anyway, but if I if I die here, I won't have the heart to be able to continue doing it while recording. So there's a lot of pressure on me to succeed right now. Okay, let's do it. Bring it, you fucking psychotic clown son of a bitch! Kafka does use a few physical attacks, but most of his abilities that he uses are spells. So... Oh, 
that's probably not a good idea. Come on, damn it, just use magic on yourself. Whatever. I'll chance it. There we go! See, that's why I kept Cyan, because he hits hard. He's slow, but he hits goddamn hard. He took a fucking truck this early in the game. Aw, oh, damn it. Whatever. I think so. Alright, he's almost dead. Looks like I got it. <laughs> Did I runic something already? I don't remember. I'm not taking chances. See, I don't actually know if you have to renew Runic over and over or not. Because I've had times where I've expected Runic to work and it just doesn't. So I kind of don't trust it anymore. These next two attacks should do it. There we go. <laughs> That wasn't so hard. <laughs> oh no, it's very much alive. again. This is another one of the moments where Terra gets an enormous amount of focus. I remember one time in the Final Fantasy group <clears throat> that I'm in, we were having a discussion, or a debate, whatever you want to use, whatever you want to call it, about the validity of Terra being the main character. And one of the, the pieces of evidence that one of the members used to say, Are you kidding me? Terra gets so much focus, she has to be the main character, was the scene. And it was hard to argue against that. But she tends to lose a lot of that focus as the story goes along, especially in the World of Ruin, where she gets virtually almost none. And even in the World of Balance, dur during the latter section, she gets less and less um, focus. In fact, this segment, as well as... You know, when we find her in Zozo, and then she remembers her past and all that, that's pretty much the last time she ever gets any kind of major direct focus to this level. But this scene is very intense. Now, Terra is half Esper, and as a result can effectively transform into an Esper. And making contact with Tritok 
See, before when she did, she was under the, the, the control of the slave crown. She didn't have her memories, her thoughts. She didn't have all that available to her. This is just my theory. In order to make a proper connection with Tritok. It was very loosely built. Because the terror herself just wasn't there. But now that she's come back to Tritok during a section of the game where she has so much more uh, understanding of herself and her abilities, comparatively speaking at, uh, at, at least. Celeste can presumably quote-unquote feel its mind because of their magical nature. See, that would actually bring further credence to my theory. We never actually get any elaboration on what Celeste is stating, but I can infer that what Celeste means by I can feel its mind is that she can actually perceive the thoughts of Tritok because they are both magical. So in other words, I believe that the first time that these two met, they tried to establish a mental connection through their magic and they ultimately failed because Terra did not have a mind to do so. This would also explain why they were unable to open the gate with Terra because I know I, they had to have tried to open the gate with Terra at one point. And as a result, Tritok said, okay, something's not right with her brain, let me fix this. So, oh, it's skipping. So he either destroyed the slave crown himself, or he, he just, no, actually Argus took the slave crown off. But either way, the point is, now, Terra can actually understand Tritok's thoughts and vice versa. And as a result, she transforms. Because she's able to do so. She was always able to do so. She just knows how to tap into it. The problem is, she doesn't know how to control it and it overwhelms her. Just like the espers who had entered the human world lost control of their abilities. And that scream fucking is terrifying. And then we get this amazing sequence where Terra is just flying around randomly. Just. She doesn't know where she's going or why or what to do. Now. I believe there were some implications that Rama's magical presence effectively summoned her there. That's certainly a possibility. We're lying in the same bed Tara was when we first heard this song. Now this is probably the only section of the game where the, the theme Awakening plays when Tara herself is not there, but it's clearly all about Tara. This is the moment where she's arguably the most lost and confused she's ever been in her entire life. As soon as I saw this line, let's go, I promised her I'd... I immediately stopped, just like I'm doing right now. And I waited for a few moments, because I, I got a better understanding of Locke's character and how he feels about the situation. And I know it had to have had some kind of impact, it had to have been important, because immediately afterward, they all gather around.
Alright. This is the part where you form a group. This will be the last thing I do before I end the video. I'm taking Locke. Because... Oh god, it's coming up! <laughs> uh, I'm not ready for my next video. I take Locke because he clearly has the most to gain by doing so. He leaves because he, of both all people, wants to find Terra right now. And taking him is very important for when we go to Conkligan, or however you pronounce it, for Rachel. In fact, I don't know what happens if you don't take Locke. I mean, I almost wish it was mandatory to take Locke, because if you don't take him, I can only imagine that you missed that scene entirely, and that's, that's sickening to me. It's, I don't understand. But at the same time, I can't blame the developers for allowing the choice of freedom, because why wouldn't you take Locke? I mean, really? Is it, is it even a question? If you have even the slightest amount of investment in the story and the characters, you took Locke. I promise you, you took him. Alright. I take Celeste because Celeste needs to be there for the Rachel situation, as well as the Setzer situation in Gidor. Not Gidor. Well, yeah, I guess Gidor too. In the Opera House. Although that's some time away. I take Edgar and Sabin because A, the two of them go to Figaro and you have to bring both of them in order to get a nice amount of fleshing out of their backstory. As well as, <laughs> and I, this part I failed to do. Um, the first time I played this game, I don't remember if I brought Edgar and Sabin for Figaro Castle. But I know for a fact I didn't bring both of them for the Setzer section, so I didn't I didn't understand the significance of the coin and that it was rigged. <laughs> so yeah, I don't think I, I I think the first time I played this game I don't I didn't bring both of them, and I was so pissed off. It blew my mind when I found out that the coin was fucking rigged. It was a fucking double-sided coin, and I had no idea. So yeah, this is I'm sorry. If you have your preferences, if you like Cyan or Dao as a player or a character, that's fine, but this is the ideal party you take. Da -da -da. All right, I'm going to save in just a moment to end this video. Let me just make sure everyone's equipped for next time. Everyone should be. I know these two are. Let me double check. Okay, Edgar's the only one who shouldn't be properly equipped right now. Oh, oh yeah. Terra doesn't have it right now, because we don't have her right now, so give the earring to Celeste. Uh, what other relics did I have? Useless ones. Let's see, what am I missing? Oh yeah. I don't have anything I can give them, may as well just lay those on top of them. Oh yeah. Not sure how I feel about leaving these two people here <laughs> to guard Narsh. Nothing will happen to it, but dude, Bannon disappeared. It's not the world of ruin yet. There he goes. Come on, speed up the conversation, Arvis. Okay, this is just getting ridiculous. Come on! I'd like to save at some point. Dude, it's just getting worse. My god. Oh, okay. Well, meanwhile, while that's happening, so, um, 
How about them Knicks? Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah, no, I'm going to end the video here um, before I save. I was going to save real quick, but this officially ends what is considered by a few people to be the end of Act 1. And it, it all makes perfect sense from... I'm just going to assume that it's recording my voice. It all makes perfect sense when you think about it, because we started off in Narsh with Terra. We ended in Narsh without Terra. After three scenarios where all the characters gathered together to fight Kefka. So, hope you guys enjoyed my video up until it started skipping uncontrollably. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to end this and try to find a way to save. It's been fun.